Hi guys, this is Miss Olson. It is virtual day on Friday, February the 5th, and I am getting ready to do some choice boards for next week. And I was thinking about the Super Bowl, and I remembered a book that I have ordered for our library, so I thought I'd give you a sneak peek. The title is What is the Super Bowl? It's one of the bobblehead books that we enjoy so much. And this one was written by Dina Anastasio. So I thought I would read just a little bit of it to you, and then you can be looking forward to um, when this book comes in, hopefully a little later in the month or towards the beginning of March. What is the Super Bowl? By Dina Anastasio, illustrated by David Groff. And this book was published by Penguin. Um, something that's kind of interesting, if you look right here, this text copyright was originally written in 2015, but see how it says comma 2017 comma 2019? That tells you that the author has been updating this book. So as there have been other Super Bowls, she has gone back and she has added information each time so that the book stays up to date, which is pretty cool. All right, let's read. Lots of good things on that table of contents. What is the Super Bowl? Some people call it winter's 4th of July. Others say it's America's biggest party. It happens every year on a Sunday in January or February. It's that Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday. The Super Bowl is the National Football League's championship game. It's the game fans have been thinking about all season. The Super Bowl is the game. It pits the champion of the National Football Conference against the champion of the American Football Conference. No game has more TV viewers. No sports ticket costs more. No other halftime show is louder, brighter, wilder. The winning team takes home a sterling silver trophy. Every winning player receives a gold ring with diamonds. Every team wants to be there. Every fan wants their team to play there. Super Bowl Sunday finally arrives. Excited fans gather at parties. Bowls of chips and pretzels clutter coffee tables. Millions of people turn on their TVs. Pizzas arrive. Friends and neighbors bring dips and nachos and sandwiches. Restaurants and bars fill up with happy fans. Mm, except this year, we'd have to put some masks on those people, wouldn't we? And scoot them apart a little bit so they're socially distanced. The luckiest fans head to the stadium where the Super Bowl is being played. There isn't an empty seat anywhere. The two teams line up across the field from each other. Someone sings the Star Spangled Banner. A coin is tossed. One team will kick off and one will receive. It's time for the kickoff. 11 players on each team take their positions. Fans in the stadium cheer. It's starting, the fans at home say. Here we go, fans in the restaurant shout. The kicker kicks the ball. Another Super Bowl begins. Chapter 1, The First Super Bowl The first Super Bowl was played in Los Angeles on January the 15th, 1967. The game was called the AFL-NFL World Championship, later known as Super Bowl I. At halftime, Coach Vince Lombardi was nervous. The score was 14-10. His team, the Green Bay Packers, were four points ahead. But Lombardi knew that four points didn't mean much. Everyone had been so sure the Packers would destroy the Kansas City Chiefs. Lombardi's Packers were the National Football League champions. Their quarterback was Bart Starr. He was one of the best players in the league. The NFL had been around since 1920. They had experience. 
NFL teams had the skills. They were stronger and tougher. But Lombardi wondered if this AFL team was better than everybody thought. The Chiefs were the American Football League champions. They were newcomers. The AFL had started in 1940. And 60, I'm sorry. The AFL had started in 1960, 40 years after the NFL. The press still called them beginners and upstarts. No one thought the Chiefs had a chance. The nine AFL teams were brash, untamed, messy. Okay, maybe they were good at passing. They might even be faster. But this new league just didn't seem ready. Top tickets at the Los Angeles Coliseum were selling for $12. In 1967, that price seemed crazy to most people. Who could afford that much for a ticket to a football game? There were empty seats. The game would turn out to be the only Super Bowl in history that wasn't sold out. Hmm. Now there's a picture drawn with a label that says Hank Strom. Let's find out who he is. Hank Strom was the coach of the Kansas City Chiefs. He was worried too. The Chiefs had an excellent defense, but they would have to work harder than ever to stop Bart Starr. This wasn't just a game to determine the best football team in America. This was a game to prove the AFL could compete against the big guys. As Lombardi gave his team a halftime pep talk, jazz musician Al Hurt played his trumpet on the field. Two marching bands performed. When the second half began, it looked like the Chiefs had a chance. A four-point lead wasn't enough to guarantee a win. Lynn Dawson, the Chiefs quarterback tried to throw a pass. The Packers defense went to work. They rushed him. Willie Wood intercepted the pass and ran 50 yards to the Kansas City five-yard line. Elijah Pitts scored the touchdown. Suddenly, the score was Packers 21, Chiefs 10. Whew. Vince Lombardi began to breathe easier. The Packers stepped it up even more. Starr threw one successful pass after another. The game ended. Final score, Packers 35, Chiefs 10. Green Bay took home the trophy and the winning team rings. Bart Starr was named the game's most valuable player. The press reported that the AFL team had been crushed, just as expected. But, at least it wasn't a shutout. The AFL needed more time, more experience. Maybe they'd win one, someday. On January 14, 1968, Vince Lombardi's NFL Green Bay Packers traveled to Miami to defend their title. This was the second AFL-NFL World Championship game. It would later be known as Super Bowl II. Once again, no one thought the AFL team had a chance. The Oakland Raiders needed practice. People called them another upstart team from an upstart league. Super Bowl II ended with a final score of Green Bay 33, Oakland 14. The American Football League was dismissed as the little league that couldn't. No AFL team would ever be able to compete against the mighty NFL, or would they? Here and there in the book, there are little pages that insert different facts, and this fact is about Vince Lombardi. It's kind of a mini biography. Vince Lombardi was born in Brooklyn, New York on June 11th, 1913. He helped his parents take care of four younger brothers and sisters. He worked in his father's butcher shop. He played football in his Brooklyn neighborhood. 
At Fordham University, he was a star on a winning football team, but he was small. Vince decided to take a job as a high school coach. His St. Cecilia team became the best in the country. In 1959, Lombardi became head coach of the struggling Green Bay Packers. He worked his players hard. Soon, the team was winning games. At the end of his first season, Lombardi was named Coach of the Year. The Packers kept winning. They won five NFL championships. Vince Lombardi was one of the greatest NFL coaches ever. When he died in 1970, the World Professional Championship Trophy was renamed in his honor. Each year, the winning Super Bowl team receives the Vince Lombardi Trophy. And if you're ever in Green Bay, the stadium where the Packers play is called Lombardi Stadium. Well, that was the first chapter. What do you think? Is this a book you're going to want to check out and finish reading? I thought maybe some of you would enjoy it. All right, I'm going to leave you there. Chapter 2, The Team That Couldn't. Hmm, I don't think that American Football League is always going to be the underdog. See you soon.